Vin Future Prize, a new global science and technology prize for humanity from Vietnam. One Vin Future Grand Prize of $3 million. Three additional special Vin Future Prizes valued at $500,000 each. Vin Future Prize honors science and technology work that creates or has a high potential to create meaningful change in the everyday lives of millions of people. Join us to make a change for a better future. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and distinguished guests. My name is Tao Tan. I am the marketing specialist here at Vin Future Prize, and it is an honor to be here for today's moderator. Uh, welcome to the very first information webinar at the Vin Future Prize 2023. Before we start, please keep in mind that your microphone should be muted to ensure the quality of the video and the audio as well. I would also like to inform you that the webinar will be recorded for note taking purposes and, now, and also for our records. So if you have any objections, please let us know. Ladies and gentlemen, in today's webinar, I would like to introduce to you the panelists. The chair of today's webinar is Professor Thuc Quyen Nguyen. She is the co-chair of the Vin Future Prize pre-screening committee. The co-chair of the webinar is Professor Daniel Kamen. He is the member of the Vin Future Prize Council. And our special guest, Professor Talapil Pradeep from India. He is the laureate of the Vin Future Special Prize for innovators from developing countries from last year. From the Vin Future Prize team, I would like to introduce the managing director, Dr. Le Tai Ha, and Dr. Hien Ngo from the Secretariat. And for now, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Le Tai Ha for to, to start off today's session with an introduction about Vietnam, our founders, and also about the Vin Future Foundation. Please welcome Dr. Le Tai Ha. Thanks, Tao, and a very good day to everyone. My name is Tai Ha, and I'm the managing director of Vin Future Prize, Vin Future Foundation. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for spending the time with us today. It is our great pleasure to have so many distinguished um, researchers and scholars with us today. And I hope that you will find this session informative and helpful. Before we begin, I'd like to share some important information about Vietnam, the Future Foundation, our founder, and also the prize. As you know, Vietnam is a Southeast Asian country with a population of 99.6 million. We are proud of the positive transformation that have taken place in our country, and we have been recognized as the new tiger economies in Asia. Our people are friendly, hardworking, eager to learn, and our entire country is dynamic. Now, let's talk briefly about the two founders of Vin Future Foundation, Mr. Phạm Nhật Vượng and his wife, Madame Phạm Thu Hương. Mr. Vượng was born in 1968 in Vietnam and he studied in Russia. In 2020, he was honored as one of the four heroes of philanthropy in the Asia Pacific region for his significant contribution to Vietnam's pandemic relief effort. He once said, I don't care how much money I make, I want to build things that make life beautiful. The second founder is Mitterfoot wife, Madame Phạm Thu Hương, who is a standing vice president of Bing Group. As the largest private corporation in Vietnam, Bing Group focuses on three main pillars, industry, services, and social philanthropy. We are the pioneers and the largest player in almost every market we operate in, from real estate, hospitality, healthcare, education, to mobility. Founded on 20 December 2020, which is the International Human Solidarity Day, the Future Foundation mission is to build a future where breakthrough scientific innovation and technological uh, innovations empower people, positively enhance their lives, and create a more equitable and sustainable world for future generations. We are working toward this mission through four activities. The first and foremost is the annual Vin Future Prize, the first SciTech Global Prize from Vietnam. Although Vietnam is still a developing country, Vin Future Prize is one of the world's largest annual prizes in science and technology, with one grand prize of three million US dollar and three special prizes of five hundred thousand US dollar each. We hope that Vietnam will be more visible on the global map of science and technology in the years to come. Next, I'd like to share more about Vin Future Prize Science Tech Week. 
event, which consists of a series of events organized within the week. Due to the time constraint of this webinar, I will only show you some photos of memorable moments from the 2022 season. The most important event is, of course, the Vin Fisher Prize Award Ceremony held on 20 December 2022, where we announced our laureate to the public. Here in the photo, you can see there are four winners of the Vin Fisher Grand Prize, Sir Tim Berners-Lee from the UK, Dr. Vincent from the US, Dr. Emmanuel de Sofia from France, and Professor Sir David Payne from the UK. This laureate make breakthrough invention in global te internet connection technology, which have comprehensively changed means of communication and working, and led a stepping stone for modern social economic development. The persons in the middle of the picture is the chairman of the National Assembly, Mr. Vu Minghui. And here is the winner of the special prize for female innovators, Professor Pamela Rona from the US. Her groundbreaking work on isolating the sub-1 A gene has created a foundation for developing blood tolerant rice varieties. The special prize for innovators from developing countries went to Professor Tao Pia Pradip from India. We are honored to have him joining us today as a special guest. Professor Pradip invented a low-cost water um, filtration system that can remove arsenic and heavy metal from a water, providing clean water to millions of residents in areas affected by water pollution. And the special prize for innovator with outstanding achievement in emerging fields awarded to uh, Dr. Demis Hassabis from the UK and Dr. John Jumper from the US. They developed the Anfafo 2 an AI system that revolutionized protein structure modeling and advanced breakthroughs in biomedicine, healthcare, and agriculture. Dr. John Jumper arrived in Hanoi, but unfortunately, he was unable to attend the ceremony due to an emergency, so we, he had to fly back earlier. Apart from the award ceremony, we also organized four other events during the SciTech Week. The first event was the conversation with members of Infusion Prize Councils and the Pre-Screening Committee. This event was an interactive session where the policymakers, social activists, entrepreneurs, leading scientists, researchers, and talented students in Vietnam engaged in the discussion with the panelists who share their personal and professional experiences, their successes, but also their failures. We also held an inspirational talk series we call Innovative Today, Great Tomorrow. It brought together experts from various fields to give talk to Vietnamese experts, young scientists, talented students, also the startup community. Our Science for Life Symposium was a day-long event that created connection between the Vietnamese sci-tech community and top scientists, policymakers, and entrepreneurs. The symposiums had three consecutive 90-minute panels, each focusing on critical issues related to a particular theme for the future. Lastly, we organized an event to connect the laureate with the public. We call it Talk Future, a dialogue with the Vin Future Prize 2022 laureate. The dialogue offered a chance for the laureate to share the scientific breakthrough story, inspiration, and aspirations. It was a highly intellectual and inspirational event that will be remembered as a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Thank you for listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of our webinar today. We have some more exciting content coming up. How over to you. Thank you, Dr. Thai Ha, for your sharing. Now, we do hope that after hearing your presentations and what you have to say about the Vin Future Prize Foundation, a lot of our respected scientists will be more interested in the prize. Now let's move on to the next section. Please welcome our chair for today, Professor Thuc Quyen Nguyen. She has been with us since the beginning over the past three years. I can say that she is an important part of the Vin Future family, and I'm quite confident that she will provide the most basic and important information about the Vin Future Prize. The stage is yours, Professor Nguyen. Thank you very much, Tao, for the kind introduction. 
Uh, let me see if I can share my uh, screen. So can everybody see my slide? Okay. Yes, Professor. Yeah. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depend on where you are. And thank you very much for joining us today. So I will take just a few minutes to give you a brief introduction about the Vin Future Prize. And so what exactly the Vin Future Prize? So it's the first global side tech prize from Vietnam and is one of the world's largest annual prizes in science and technology. It was established in 2020. And so we have four different prizes. The grand prize is $3 million and awarded annually to proven breakthrough research and technological innovation that positively improve the quality of human life. So we have three special prizes with half a million dollars each and is awarded for the three category. Uh, the first one is to innovators from the developing countries. And the second special prize is awarded to female innovators. And the last one to innovators with outstanding achievements in emerging fields. And so the mission of the Vin Future Prize is to create meaningful change in the everyday life of millions of people. And by promoting breakthrough scientific research and technological innovation. So the often people ask, uh, what are the criteria for nomination for the grand prize? And so the grand prize, so please consider that it should have a proven, already proven impact, uh, which have already benefited millions of people over the past 10 years and may have a greater pervasive impact and much more meaningful change in the future. So the impact will not only happen in the past, uh, uh, or the present, we also want to see the continued impact and growing impact in the future. So the criteria for nomination for the three special prizes should have a potential impact, which will benefit millions of people in the next 10 years. And so for the nominators, uh, so we do not accept self nominations. And we also invite both organizational and institutional nominators and also individual nominator uh, to, to submit the nomination. And you can do so via the online nomination form and our secretary as will uh, show you a bit about the nomination online system a bit later. So Vin Future Prize also welcome nomination from uh, organizations such as university, research institute, center, uh, academia of science and technology, scientific association, uh, network and the society, scientific society, corporation and industries, innovation incubators, uh, prominent individual in related area of STEM. The Vin Future Prize will also partner with many pre-teachers academic institution and organization around the globe to identify top nominations. Uh, we accept nomination from both invited nominators as well as nominators who do not receive uh, invitation letters from the Vin Future Prize. And so provided that meet, they meet the criteria approved by the Vin Future Foundation. So if you have any question or in doubt, um, you can just always uh, contact the foundation, the secretariat, and they can provide you further information. So the Win Future Prize uh, election or selection process. So we have the Bring Future Prize Council and they are comprised of this member, distinguished team of global renowned individual from uh, both academia, uh, research uh, institute and industry. And we have uh, 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 Professor Dan, Daniel Kamen to here today uh, from the uh, represent the Pride Council. And then uh, we also have the pre-screening committee and we also have uh, scientists and also researchers from different disciplines uh, uh, come together uh, to, to help with the selection process, evaluation process. And I am the co-chair of the pre-screening committee together with Professor Albert Passino. And so I represent the uh, pre-screening committee to be here today. 
And so I show you here the photo of the 2021 Vin Future Laureate. And so we have the grand prize with uh, the three uh, distinguished scientists for the discovery of mRNA uh, vaccine. And then we also have uh, this uh, uh, researcher innovator for the special prize. We already saw uh, through the introduction with, uh, from Taiha, uh, the 2022 Win Future Laureate. And we very honored to have one of the laureate here today with us. And so with that, I will also want to uh, uh, close up with this slide about the nomination uh, key timeline for 2023. So uh, since January until mid-May, uh, we already have call out for nomination, the online platform open for you to uh, submit the nomination. And then from June to September uh, this year, that's where the pre-screening committee will work to uh, process the, uh, will start with the evaluation. And then between August and October, uh, we have the reviewing and the selection by the, the, the Pride Council. Uh, and then the uh, Win Future Prize announcement and award ceremony uh, will happen on December uh, 20. But we have the whole event week with different events. So please uh, stay tuned for that and join us for this special event. And so with that, thank you very much for your attention. And I will let MC continue with the uh, uh, webinar tonight. Now let's move on to the next session. Uh, which will feature a conversation with Professor Kamen. He has become a member of the Vin Future Prize Council since last year. Good evening, Professor Kamen. How are you doing tonight? Very well. Good evening to you and everyone who's listening. Uh, after one year with us, uh, could you please tell us that, in your opinions, what are the factors that make the Vin Future Prize unique? There's actually quite a list. I think the most interesting thing for me, um, and I speak both as a professor, but also as someone who has been part of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and we got to share the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize. And one of the challenges for research in the, in the current era is that we need often bigger teams and teams that are more interdisciplinary. And many of the traditional prizes don't have roles to feature that. And as you saw in the opening run through of the grand prize and the three special prizes, there's much more flexibility here in the VIN prizes to reflect teams and to reflect critical issues for emerging issues and to reflect parts of our underrepresented research and innovation communities. And all of those things are critical, and they're all things that the VIN Prize has found ways to uplift, to make innovation for all of us and by all of us in the human community really part of the story. And so that, I think, is the core feature that excited me. And of course, as someone who works in the US and in many industrializing countries, the fact that this prize is both shared in Vietnam, but also reflects research done by emerging innovators, like some of you're gonna hear from soon. Those are really the reasons why this is so exciting to me. All right, uh, in your opinions, from your point of view, who can be the nominators for the Vin Future Prize? So anyone can nominate. Um, there is a process to identify people, but as you, as you can see in the forums, um, anyone can send in a nomination. And what's nice about it is there's two different levers. One is that if you know of an individual or a team, you can nominate them. The prize is focused on people, not institutions. So if there's a wonderful team at a laboratory, you know, or a company or an independent researcher or a group, you can nominate them individually or as a group. And the more information that you provide to us, both the pre-screening committee and then when it comes to the prize committee, it allows us to do what you saw happen this past year. And that is to put together teams of people that we think their collective work, whether they worked together or they worked independently, but their work collectively changes our ability to access the internet or to understand or take advantage of science, technology, and social innovations. 
you can nominate them. And the more information that nominators provide, the more we can go find and really develop and reward those teams. So anyone can be a nominator. Um, and it allows you to think about the people in their institutions or just working alone that have really made these differences both today and going forward. And that's an area where the, where the VIN prize is unique. We can see potential based on your nominations and go and assess what might it do to society and try to help those innovators and those careers along. All right. Uh, so my question for you is, how do you think as how, how do you think about the Vin Future Prize mission and why global experts should think and submit valuable innovations to the Vin Future Prize? Well, there's really two reasons. One is that we are on a crowded planet where we're stressing ecosystems, we're stressing individuals, we're stressing communities around the planet. And many of the traditional research institutions like mine at the University of California, Berkeley, we have a number of Nobel laureates, for example, we have a tree where all of our prize winners go and pose in the tree. That's great. And I love it. But we need to think more about the future and to understand that some of the things that seem interesting but not yet proven are just as important for our future. And of course, if we look at our cell phones, if we look at technologies we use, you saw the, the prize for innovations in agriculture. Some of these don't get picked up by many of the prizes today until the VIN Future Prize said, we're going to look for things that will shape our society going forward, not just wonderful things we've done in the past. All right. Thank you for your response. And we strongly agree with what you have to say. Thank you, Professor Kamen. Thank I hope you. that until this section, our participants are gaining a better understanding of the Vin Future Prize and its uniqueness, how we are different from other global prizes, and our mission, Science for Humanity. Let's move on to the next session. To better understand the mission to the fullest, I'm pleased to welcome Professor Talapil Pradeep. He was awarded the VinFuture Special Prize for Innovators from Developing Countries last year. He was honored for his development of a low-cost filtration system to remove arsenic and other heavy metals from groundwater. His innovation helps hundreds of millions of people around the world, those living with contaminated water, to get access to clean water. Please welcome Professor Pradeep. How are you? It is nice to see you again. Thank you. It is indeed a great pleasure here uh, to participate in this um, discussion. All right. Uh, for warm up questions, could you please share with us what are you doing after receiving the Vin Future Special Prize Award and any change in your life or have you gotten any new research plan or new project you would like to share with us? Well, a, a prize does not change you. Uh, mm -hmm. It. Um, Obviously, I am the same person. I, I come here at eight o'clock in the morning. I continue to work the way I work. Uh, however, Win Future Prize has given great visibility. Uh, as a result of that great visibility, uh, there have been several contacts uh, coming from corporations, uh, individuals, NGOs, governments, so we are expanding the reach of our technologies to more and more people. Uh, one important mission of Win Future Price is that, and I'm so glad that it is happening that way. The second thing is that in the lab, we are expanding into other areas. However, it is not yet time to tell you a whole lot. It has just been the past two months that you know, I have just won that prize. Uh, but there have been a lot of activities. More and more people are participating in this. I'm putting together a larger the a team uh, on water, looking at different dimensions of water. The third thing is that I need, I think that it is important to disseminate this information uh, to the larger community. So we are on a book. <clears throat> uh, so that's, those are the three major things that I would like to share at this point in time. And now you are a member of the Vin Future Prize family, and you are also the laureate of a Vin Future Prize Award. What do you think about the uniqueness that the Vin Future Prize is bringing to our community? 
uh, to me, uh, science is a great uh, leveler. Uh, and when future prize celebrates future transformative impact on the society. So in, to me, in this great uh, saga of humanity, we are where we are because of science uh, and transformative science. And like the previous uh, speaker talked about, Dan talked about, science is the only way that we can probably see uh, a sort of the humanity as a whole. And science by itself doesn't do that. Transformation makes that, and that is interdisciplinary. Greater teams make this. I don't see another prize at this level celebrating all this. This is my most, I think, the most important thing, which was already touched upon by Dan. All right, just one final question for you, uh, Professor uh, Pradeep. In your opinion, what is the competitiveness or you might say advantages of nominators or scientists from developing countries? In uh, the developing world is full of problems. Uh, a whole set of problems and all of these are important for to solve for a sustainable world. These, in my opinion, can be solved only in being in the developing world. Imported solutions do not work here. Therefore, it is important to innovate in this place, although it is difficult, uh, although it is, it is important to put in additional efforts to innovate here, this is essential. This needs to be celebrated only then the world will be a greater place. Thank you, Professor Pradeep. I hope our, professor, our prospective nominators now will have more inspirations and proceed with their submission. Thank you. Thank you. And in order to ensure your submissions process will happen smoothly, I would like to introduce my colleague from the Vin Future Secretariat, Dr. Hien Ngo, and she will go through the nominations from step by step. Please uh, proceed, Dr. Yang Thank you, Tao. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm very delighted to represent the Secretariat at the Green Future Prize to walk you through the most important contents and features of the nomination portal in the nomination form to quickly show you on how you can submit or nominate <laughs> the some scientists to our prize. And to begin, you can access the nomination portal at online.vinfutureprize.org slash nomination to sign up for an account to start uh, the nominating. The nomination package including six sections, the prize and nomination type, the information of nominees, nominators, the invention, and your evaluation of the nominee's invention, and finally, the endorsement letters. And I would like to call for your attention from page number four to number seven. On page number four, please provide the title of the invention, the invented year, the conducting countries, and uh, the related links. And on page number five, uh, you are required to give the evaluation on two main criteria. The first one is the degree of technology advancement, means the scientific fundamental uh, knowledge or the uniqueness and the advancement of the invention. And the second one is the social economic impacts and meaningful change. How many number of millions of people or countries or continents uh, can be benefited and how this invention has transformed or will potentially transform our lives. And uh, move to page number six. Please ask the endorsers in your scientific network who may provide the recommendations or the precise evaluation on for the work on two aspects. The first one is the scientific impacts and the second one is the social economic impacts. Three endorsement letters are strongly preferred but 
at least one is mandatory. You can also directly type the answer on the online form or you can attach the PDF file at the tab number seven. I will show you now uh, about the supporting documents and the evidence. Among many required documents, I would like to call for your attention for three very important documents. The first one is the CV of the nominees or the group of nominees. And the second one is the endorsement letter. And the third one is the ended ed additional form of nominees. And you are encouraged to include other documents such as the valid intellectual properties, the publications, the patents, and so on. And now on the screen, you can scan the QR code uh, to open the nomination web page where you can go down to find the guidelines for nominators. Uh, all what I just saw you already there and you can easily download the templates of nomination form, the endorsement letter and the additional form of the nominees. And hence, you can drop the nomination and collect the evidence whenever you have time. And when you are ready, please go to the online portal, copy and paste there. So that's all about how a nominator can nominate for the Vin Future Prize. We are happy to assist you to uh, this process. And thank you very much. And we we'll look forward to your outstanding nomination. And now, please let our MC to move the most important uh, section, the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hien Wu, for your sharing. And the next part is possibly one of the most interesting and also the important parts of today's webinar, uh, the Q&A session. After listening to so many detailed presentations and information, it is understandable that you yourself might have some concerns or questions for us. Uh, please raise your hand if you wish to ask as we will assist in unmuting you or to send questions directly to our chat, chat box. And I will just read this one out loud. Will this presentation be recorded and available to nominators so that we can check later or share with authorities from my institution? I'm sure that this one is uh, already, it will be on Facebook, will be on the Vin Future Prize Facebook. We will proceed to answer several questions that are currently, that are frequently asked by our nominators and those interested. Uh, the first questions that are frequently asked are the, is what are the additional criteria for nominations for the Vin Future Special Prize for Developing Country Innovators? Uh, Professor, Gwen, can you please help us with this question? So the, the, to answer the question, so the research have to be done in the developing country. As Professor Pradeep already mentioned earlier, uh, will have to be done there uh, in the developing country to uh, qualify for this. And also very important that the technology have to be in, impactful on everyday life, but affordable. Like we talk about water filter as an example, there are different water filter technology in the US, in Europe and so on. But the people in India, in Vietnam, and it not, it, 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 they cannot afford it. And so, so that keep those two in mind, have to be done in developing country and have to make an impact for, have to be affordable. All right, uh, the next question is, maybe Pro Professor Quinn could help us with this one as well. Is self-nomination allowed? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the, we, will, we will not accept self-nomination. So you will need the nominator uh, to nominate you. The next frequently asked questions, is there any condition for age for who, can, who, for who will apply? Professor Kalman, may you please help us answer this question? Yeah, anyone is a viable candidate to be nominated, but of course, it would be it would be interesting and challenging if one was really, really young, but certainly you can be a, a quite senior. Um, in fact, we've looked at files from people with a very large range, so this is not a constraint. The next question would be, is it is there any chance for or possible for developing country scientists to compete with developed sci countries scientists? I think this question would be best answered by our laureate, Dr. Uh, Professor Pradeep. Uh, well, it is important to compete at 
the international level to be doing anything in science. Uh, so this is one thing. However, in every area, are you in a position from a developing country to compete in any area, every area? This is a question, and I do not believe that we have come to that stage yet. But there are a number of areas where it is possible to compete. In fact, if I could just add a little bit to that, I think one of the really key features is that we know from scientists um, physical scientists, natural scientists, people in the humanities over the centuries, that one of the strongest drivers of innovation is the direct perception of need. Um, many scientists, whether you're a basic theoretical scientist or more applied, when you see a challenge, you want to address it. That excites many of us on the research side. And there are many challenges that if you're living um, in an industrialized country, you don't see the same things that you see if you're working on arsenic in rural areas or, or, or pest resistance crops or solar panels that can stand the dust storms that we see in parts of the world. So there's many things that actually, there's an advantage to see the world differently. And we have focused for many decades, if not longer, on the things that the most affluent see. Um, and we have not focused on the challenges that others see. So I think actually, while your resources might not be as great, often your vision of the world is clearer when you're not sitting in some of the richest capitals of the world. Yeah, and I would like to add to that as well, that when you have limited resources, when you face challenges, uh, you also lead to creativity. And I have seen that quite a lot and visited lab where they have very limited resources. They make things work. To me, that really, really impressive. Yeah. Well, it is uh, like saying that uh, if the only thing you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail, you know. Yes. So I, 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 I keep discovering newer and newer things with older tools. Thank you. And I think another question that uh, would be best addressed to Professor Guyen, what are the additional criteria for nominations for the Vin Future Special Prize for Female Innovators? Well, <laughs> so the, the, the one criteria that the uh, main discovery and breakthrough have to be done by the uh, female nominees and uh, regarding of what part of the world that the, the, the nominee come from. Uh, and of course, like all the pride, we look at both the fundamental science advancement as well as the impact. But usually we, we look at the, uh, uh, when we talk about special prize, the, in this category, you have to, can be the potential impact in a short term, can be two years, can be five years. Uh, and, and so that that's the distinction, yeah. And, okay. and the common question, uh, I just like to add one more thing. Common question people always ask that what happened because now science really done in collaborative culture environment. And so we recognize that, but the main contribution of that uh, nom nomination have to come uh, conducted by our female nominees. Yeah. We have just received a question from one of our viewers right about now from Eduardo Vilvado Lima. The concept of developing country may not be precise. Are there a list of countries which are considered developing or developed for the Vin Future Prize? Professor Quinn and Professor Kamen, you might may you help us with this question, please? Yes, this question has come up in the past uh, because, uh, and that I think that the Win Future Prize, we do have our own list and our list uh, may not align with the United Nations. And I give one example, for example, China, right? So the resources for science, for research is just really, really uh, great. And so, so we, when we look into this, the, the definition of our foundation for develop, developing country, uh, not in terms of the income uh, of the citizen, but also the resources to do science and conduct uh, research and also discovery and technology. And, and Dan may have some more to add to that. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I think that you you nailed it um, in that one, that there are certain countries that have transitioned in the last uh, few decades. South Korea, for example, 25 years ago, we might have thought differently. Now it's very clear. India, even some places, um, you know, South Africa, Kenya, there are places that are transitioning. But as you can see, there is a list here. Um, and I think I suspect that the list adjusts over time. But normally, if you think it's industrializing or or, or or industrial, you'll 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 most likely be right. But but the, the list is available here. We also receive another uh, frequently asked question: Can I serve as a nominator if my relatives are on the pre-screening committee or the prize council of the Vin Future Prize? Maybe Professor Gwyn and also Professor Kamen can help explain this question. So. Uh, in that situation, the answer that uh, are no, because they're conflict of interest. Yeah. And the next question is, will the pre-screening committee contact the person who is writing the endorsement letter for the purpose of verification? Professor Gwyn, please. So we have not done that. Uh, we do not plan to, uh, but in so I would not say entirely no because it really depends. Uh, we don't think that we want to do more for verification, but from time to time you can see that our secretariat will reach out to the to the nominator and ask for additional information or maybe from the the, the reference uh, letter writer to provide additional information that can be helpful to the uh, committees. We also just received another question. Uh, is one proposes as a candidate in one category and the jury members find, their, find them better suited for a different category, would they place the candidate in the most appropriate category? Professor Kamen, may you help us with this question, please? Yeah, so this does come up. Um, and actually, the answer is yes. Um, um, the, the committee will look at that and determine if there's a fit um, and so, yeah, the, there is flexibility within within the categories, and it does depend somewhat on the the nomination, who are nominated. Um, but the the pre screening committee and the prize committee can can ask for more information and then make a, an appropriate call if that's if that's needed. It's an it's an interesting question. Another question that we're receiving: Is it possible to nominate scientific works that have already been recognized by other awards? Professor Gwen, could you help us with this question, please? So we also have the question came up uh, quite often. Uh, we at the point for the uh, for the special prize, uh, we will not consider uh, nominators that or um, nominees uh, already won major prize, like for example the breakthrough prize or Nobel prize. Uh, but for the grand prize, we do not exclude a uh, nominee that who already got all the major prize. Yeah. The next question is addressed to Professor Pradeep. May I submit my candidature to participate as a geologist to this session dealing with Vinch Future Prize 2023? Well, this is uh, nothing to do with the prize councils, uh, you know, uh, what opinion. It is my personal opinion. To me, uh, transformative impact can happen from any subject area. And it, this can happen from geology too. In this context, in the context of water itself, such a solution can come from uh, a person working in that area. So I would consider that. Yeah. Thank you, Professor Pradeep. Uh, the last question is addressed to Professor Kamen. Should we contact the nominees directly to validate the information about the product or research? Well, we ask you not to do that. Um, the prize committees, the pre-screening and the, and, and the, uh, the, the VIN Future Council and the, um, the pre-screening can't prevent you from doing that. But we urge you to know enough about the candidates and to think about their ecosystem that you can do it without contacting them. 
because one of the neat things is actually the joy of getting that call that uh, I hope that we have someone on this uh, on the panel here who was pleased <laughs> to receive it. Um, but yeah, it's ideal if you don't do it, but of course we can't actively prevent you, but we strongly encourage. <laughs> All right, the next question is addressed to Professor Guyen. If one applies for the grand prize, can he or she prizes if suitable? Yes. So that, that basically kind of related to what Dan mentioned earlier, that the Pride Council and also pre-screening committee have the flexibility to look in at the, the uh, for different Pride category and can move the nomination from one to another. Yeah. So Tao, do uh, we is, have- Is there anyone who is participating with us today would like to ask any additional questions? We are open for Q and A's right about now. So I would like to add one thing. So if you already nominate uh, someone, the nomination will be considered for three consecutive years. And if this year will be considered, it would be great if you can also help us to update the nomination package and uh, please pay attention to provide more information regarding of the impact, especially the social impact and economical impact. So we really appreciate that. We actually have one more question. Uh, are there any specific topics for this year of Future Prize? Professor Kamen, could you help us with this question? So I think that's what's one of the most exciting things about this prize when you compare it to certain others that you'll see out there, the Kyoto Prize, some of the others that do have themes, the, um, the, the Israeli Prize, they pick themes from year to year. Um, but what we have is an open platform with the one grand prize in the three areas. And that means that as research addresses new problems, we actually can flexibly move to them. So your, your nominations that, as you heard, will be considered for three years, can really be uh, just re reflected on what you think will have the biggest future impact, or you think is having that big impact now. So no, there are no set areas and no rotational areas like some other prizes do. Okay. Oh, the last question is addressed to Professor Kuyen, how, best, how to best resubmit my 2022 nominations? Yes, so please update any additional information uh, and I know that I tend to see people know quite well in the nomination packet regarding of scientific impact, but please provide us the committee with the uh, social and economical impact. And especially if you have some sort of, uh, you know, a pattern and any company have licensed the patterns, uh, the number, quantity that you know, that will be extremely helpful for us. I think we have, uh, thank you, Professor Green. I think we have sort of enough questions for today. And uh, one, almost one hour has passed. I hope that our panelists have addressed the most important issues to you. If you have any more questions, as per usual, please don't hesitate to email them to us at the email address secretariat at vinfutureprize.org uh, so that we can respond and support you in your, in your submission process. Uh, last but not least, we would like to express our gratitude to, our, to your participation for today's webinar. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you, Professor Thupgun Nguyen, Professor Daniel Kamen, and Professor Talapil Pradeep. We are going to have the second information webinar in April. Please kindly help spread the information to your friends, colleagues, and your networks as well. We look forward to receiving your, nom your valuable nominations submission. Please have the good rest of the day. Goodbye and see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, Thank see you, you so soon, much, Professor. Professor, Dan, Professor Quinn and Professor Pradeep. And Professor Quinn, congratulations. I don't know how many times I have to say congratulations. Thank you all. So Looking forward to seeing you again in person, too. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.